Hello everyone. I am Shama Sri Kumar, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication, Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology. Today, I will be giving a presentation on the topic, Gram-Smith Orthogonalization Procedure, which is used in digital communication. The reference textbook for the same is Communication Systems by Simon Haken. Now, let's see what is Gram-Smith orthogonalization procedure. A set of real value energy signals can be represented as points on an n-dimensional space. Therefore, we require a set of mutually perpendicular axes so as to represent the signal as a point. The technique or the procedure which is used to determine the set of mutually perpendicular axes is called as the Gram-Smith orthogonalization procedure. So we consider M real valued energy signals S1 of T, S2 of T, etc. S M of T. Using this procedure, we'll be finding N orthonormal basis functions given by phi1 of t, phi2 of t, etc. phi n of t. Now what do you mean by orthonormal basis function? Orthonormal basis function means that it should satisfy two conditions. One is they should be mutually perpendicular or orthogonal to one another and the second one is that they should be normalized to have unit energy. As you can see in this figure, we are having two axes, phi1 and phi2. It represents the two orthonormal basis functions. As you can observe from the figure, they are mutually perpendicular to one another. Also, they are normalized to have unit energy. Here we are having three signals, S1, S2, S3, which are represented as a point in a two-dimensional space. Therefore, these signals can be represented as a linear combination of phi1 and phi2. Now, when you compare the number of signals and number of orthonormal axes, the number of signals m equal to 3 and the number of orthonormal axes is equal to 2. So, therefore, always n will be less than or equal to m. Now, let's see the steps in Gram-Smith orthogonalization procedure. The first step is to find the first basis function phi1 of t. phi1 of t is determined using the equation phi1 of t is equal to s1 of t by root e1. Here e1 is the energy of the signal s1 of t that is e1 is equal to integral 0 to t s1 square of t dt. From this equation, we will get that S1 of t is equal to root E1 into phi1 of t. What is this root E1? It is called as S11, which represents the projection of signal S1 of t on phi1 of t. Therefore, we can see that we have expressed S1 as a linear function of phi1 of t. In step 2, we will be finding phi 2 of t. For that, we will be finding the projection of s2 of t on the first basis function that is phi 1 of t. So, s2 1 is given by the equation integral 0 to t s2 of t into phi 1 of t dt. To determine the second basis function, we will be forming an intermediate function called as g2 of t which is equal to s2 of t minus s2 1 phi 1 of t. Now, phi2 of t is obtained using the equation g2 of t divided by root of energy of g2 of t. So, when you find the energy of the signal phi2 of t, it will be equal to 1. That is, it is normalized to have unit energy. And when you compare the signals phi1 and phi2, integral 0 to t, phi1 of t, phi2 of t will be equal to 0. That means phi1 of t and phi2 of t are orthogonal to one another. Satisfying the two conditions, the signal pair phi1 of t and phi2 of t forms an orthonormal pair. In, in step 3, we will be finding phi3 of t. 
For that, we'll be finding the projection of S3 of t on phi1 of t. That is given by S31, which is equal to integral 0 to t, S3 of t, phi1 of t, dt. Also, we'll be finding the projection of signal S3 of t on phi2 of t, which is given by S32 equal to integral 0 to t, S3 of t, phi2 of t, dt. Now, the intermediate function is formed as G3 of t equal to S3 of t minus S3 1 phi 1 of t minus S3 2 phi 2 of t. Now, the third intermediate function phi 3 of t is given by G3 of t divided by root of energy of G3 of t. Therefore, on continuing this procedure, in the ith iteration, phi i of t can be determined using the ith intermediate function g i of t given by g i of t is equal to s i of t minus summation g equal to 1 to i minus 1 s i j phi j of t. Now what is this s i j? s i j is equal to integral 0 to t s i of t phi j of t dt. It is the projection of the ith signal on the jth basis function. Now, phi i of t will be given by the equation g i of t divided by root of energy of g i of t. And the value of i will be varying from 1 to n. Therefore, using this procedure, we have determined the n orthonormal basis functions phi 1 of t, phi 2 of t, etc. phi n of t and the value of n will be always less than or equal to m. Now, if the signals s1 of t, s2 of t, etc. sm of t forms a linearly independent set, then the value of n will be always equal to m. But if they are not linearly independent, then the value of n will be less than m. In such cases, g i of t will be equal to 0 for i greater than n. If g i of t equal to 0, then 5 i of t will also be equal to 0 for i greater than n. Now, let's see an example on how to apply the Gram-Smith orthogonalization procedure. Here we are having four signals S1, S2, S3, S4. Our aim is to compute the set of orthonormal basis functions. In step 1, we will be finding phi 1 of t. Phi 1 of t is given by the expression S1 of t by root E1. So we will compute E1 which is energy of signal S1 of t. So using this signal S1 of t, you will get the energy as equal to now, phi1 of t is s1 of t by root t1, which is equal to s1 of t by root 2. Therefore, phi1 of t is s1 of t by root 2, which is 1 by root 2. So, this is our signal phi1 of t. Now, when you see the energy of the signal phi1 of t, it is equal to 1. That is, it is normalized to have unit energy. Now, proceeding on to step 2. Our aim is to find phi2 of t. For that, we will be finding the projection of second signal on the first basis function, which is equal to integral 0 to t, s2 of t, phi1 of t, dt. That is equal to, this is our signal, s2 of t. When you find s2, 1, it will be equal to 0. So, our intermediate function g2 of t is s2 of t minus s2, 1, phi1 of t, which is equal to s2 of t. Therefore, phi2 of t can be written as S2 of t divided by root of energy of S2 of t. So, what is the energy of S2 of t? It is integral 0 to t S2 square t dt which is equal to 2. Now, our second orthonormal basis function is S2 of t by root of energy of S2 of t which is equal to S2 of t by root 2. So, from this signal we can plot phi 2 of t which is 1 by root 2 amplitude and the signal is same as S2 of t. In step 3, we will be computing phi 3 of t. 
For that, we'll be finding the projection of the third signal on phi1 of t and the third signal on phi2 of t, which is given by S31 and S32. S31 is equal to integral 0 to t, S3 of t, phi1 of t, dt, which is equal to 0. And S32 is equal to integral 0 to t, S3 of t, phi2 of t, dt, which is equal to minus root 2. So when you observe this signal, the third intermediate function is S3 of t minus S31, phi1 of t minus S32, phi2 of t. So this is S3 of t, this is S32, phi2 of t and S31 is 0. Therefore, we will get G3 of t as a square from 2 to 3 with an amplitude of 1. Therefore, phi3 of t is G3 of t divided by root of energy of G3 of t is equal to G3 of t. Therefore, this signal is same as our phi3 of t. Therefore, we obtain a signal which is of 1 from the duration 2 to The next step will be similarly computing phi4 of t, which is for the fourth signal using the coefficients s41, s42 and s43. So we will get the value of g4 of t. But here g4 of t is equal to 0. We have already told that gi of t will be 0 for i greater than n if it forms a linearly dependent set. Here, since g4 of t is 0, automatically phi4 of t is equal to 0. Therefore, in this problem, we have got phi4 of t is equal to 0. This means that the signal s4 of t can be expressed as a linear combination of the basis functions phi1 of t, phi2 of t and phi3 of t. When you compare the four figures, we can see that S4 of t is equal to root 2 phi 1 of t plus phi 3 of t. Therefore, we don't require an additional fourth basis function to represent the signal S4 of t. The number of basis functions required here n is equal to 3 and this will be less than 4 which is the number of signals. Therefore, it satisfies the equation n less than or equal to m. Therefore, the, we have derived the three basis functions that is phi1 of t, phi2 of t and phi3 of t which can be used to represent the signals s1 of t to s4 of t. So, we have discussed the Gram-Smith orthogonalization procedure which can be used to find the set of orthonormal basis functions. Thank you.